Today's quote is, if you wear your blue jeans five days in a row, they become baggy and it looks like you're losing weight. Follow me for more quarantine life pro tips. Today we have this very short gospel, one of the most beautiful gospels in the entire church here, John chapter 15, verses 9 through 11, just three short verses. It's really the heart of Jesus' discourse at the Last Supper. And the Lord said this right before he walked into the Garden of Gethsemane to be arrested, then to be you know, betrayed and scourged and crowned with thorns and crucified. So Jesus tells the disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. You could meditate upon that one phrase for days and weeks and months. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. The word love here in Greek is that word agape or agape, which is this total, unconditional, sacrificial love. So it says, as the Father loves me, so how does the Father love Jesus, the eternal Son of God? Of course, he loves him infinitely. He loves him totally. He loves him unconditionally. He loves him sacrificially. He loves him with a total love. So Jesus is saying, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. If you've ever doubted God's love for you, keep read, reading and rereading that verse. Because you see that Jesus loves us the same way the Father loves him, which is really infinitely, totally, unconditionally, and sacrificially. There's nothing we can do to stop God from loving us. God is pure love. That is his nature, is to love. He continues to love us, even if a person strays or walks away from God or sins or turns his back on God. God's love will continue to be poured out upon that person because God is love. That's his very nature of God. So Jesus tells us, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. And then he asks us to remain in his love. This is the follow-up of the previous few verses where Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me, remain in me. So we want to remain in Christ's love. And then Jesus in the next sentence tells us how to do it. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. So that's how we remain in God's love is to keep the commandments. What are they? Well, of course, the 10 great commandments given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. Those 10 commandments are summed up by Jesus in the two great commandments, really the one great commandment that has two parts. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That is the summary of the 10 commandments. But then Jesus would also give us other commandments. He would say in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. And then he even says, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. So Jesus says, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. So that's how we remain in God's love, but by being in the state of grace, the state of sanctifying grace, where God's love, the divine life lives within us, then we remain in God's love if we keep his commandments. And then the gospel concludes by saying, I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. What is joy? It's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that St. Paul tells us about. Joy is the fruit of love. Just as a tree bears fruit, so love bears fruit in joy. It is one of the gifts of, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And what is joy? Joy is really this really happiness of the soul. As you know in life, there's pleasure, which is happiness of the body, and then we call happiness, which is really of the emotions. But then joy is the highest form of happiness. It is of the soul. Joy is this inner contentment and peace of soul. So Jesus says, I have told you this, that my joy might be in you. St. Paul says, for the sake of the joy that lay before him, 
Christ endured the cross. So even in the midst of his passion, Jesus had the beatific vision. He had that joy of his relationship with his heavenly father and he endured the cross, the horrific passion. And yet Jesus did that for the joy that lay before him. And he wants to give us that same joy and not just regular joy, but the fullness of joy. It says for your joy might be complete. Your joy might be full. Mother Teresa summarized it this way. She said, you spell joy, J-O-Y. Jesus first, others second, and yourself third. So the J in joy stands for Jesus, putting God first in your life, putting Jesus first in your life through prayer and coming to mass, following the commandments, and then putting others second, doing the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, and then putting yourself third.